Yo, this is a new currency recording. We're recording from Airbnb in uh, Brick Lane, Shortage, with Nathan Miller, um, a filmmaker. Introduce yourself. Yo, what's up? It's Nathan Miller. So, um, I guess the first question on my mind is, um, how did you break into filmmaking? Um, it's a long story when it comes to how I broke into filmmaking. And I know we've got time, so I'm going to run you through the whole story. Um, so I was working at a hotel in East London called the Ace Hotel. And whilst I was there, you get to meet a lot of people. Uh, one of the guests who was staying there is a DJ called DJ Cypher Sounds. And we was we was chopping up back and forth, back and forth, but I didn't really know who he was. And so I was planning a trip out to New York to do an interview, do a bunch of interviews with entrepreneurs. And that's what I, that's what I, um, that's what I was initially doing. Um, and he, he said, oh, hit me up. I said, what's your Twitter? He said, bro, you're not going to be able to catch me on that because it's, it's a little mad. But again, I didn't know who he was. I was like, who is this guy? So he, um, he gave me his email. I got home. He emailed me. And I see Hot 97 Morning Show. So I'm like, oh shit, it's lit. I was 19 years old at the time. And so fast forward a bit. I'm in New York City. I'm doing my interviews, me and my boy. And then I hit him up. I said, yo, bro, um, I'm in the city. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to be too, too needy when you're out. And so like, hey, bro, like, if you're not, if you're busy, if you're free, like, can, like, is it cool if we link up? He said, yeah, bro. Um, I got uh, Iggy Azalea's launch party to go to. Iggy Azalea hadn't come out at this time. It was, it was literally her album uh, time. You know, during the fancy. Mm. Uh, time and I told my boy that he was like fam this is a big deal you know he, he knew who she was I was like I don't know who she is fam he was like yo it's a big deal fam I said, like, cool so we had to go get our hair cuts fam I was like yo let's let's look fresh for this part you know so we went got our skin phase we were ready to go got back to the Airbnb he hit us up he was like yeah man um actually it's been cancelled come meet us in the meatpacking district went to go link him now we're outside this club we're 19 years old the security checking everyone's ID and shit and we're standing there. Mano pulls up in this, this really nice car. Then Scythe pulls up. Now they're coming towards us. I'm thinking like we're not going to get into the club because they're, ch they're checking everyone's ID. The minute we got to the door, both the security moved out of the way. So we're walking into this club now. Whole bunch of Brooklyn dudes. We're just walking through, walking through. So we get to like this final door of like VIP. Mm -hmm. And at that point, me and my brother was like, yo, it doesn't really matter if we get in or not because we're in a club. Like we brought out all our money we had. It was like, yo, we're in a club, bro. We did not think we were gonna be here. Let's turn up. Um but then Saif was like, oh yeah, yeah, um he's he's with us. And so we went up to this little room, this little VIP room, and then DJ Khaled wound up walking in, Jada Kiss wound up walking in, and amongst all of this, Saif was just I was watching Cypher Sal's move and he was just like like everyone knew him and everyone loved him so straight after that we come downstairs like they all went on stage and whatnot we left come outside i see chinks chinks drugs r.i.p and i was like fam is this is this how it is on a regular night in new york like this is my first night in new york and so from there we went to this comedy show that cypher was was doing pulled up to the spot and we went from like being with the the biggest people in the hip-hop industry to being with some real up-and-comers but cypher's attitude never changed the entire time and so fast forward of of wind up coming back to london and i said you know what it'd be really cool if i um if i done a documentary about him just because i don't think anyone really knows who he is like that anyway like it's it's a, it's a known fact that he's very underrated um he actually done an interview on the breakfast club not too long ago and that's that's what the whole the whole premise of the conversation was and so at the time i, I didn't have nothing to show for it. it's hard to say you're a, a filmmaker and then someone says, oh, let me see your work. You're like, uh, I ain't really got nothing to show you. So I um, I decided to create a little piece called Prologue, which is a um, which was a literal prologue to shooting a Cypher Sounds documentary. Uh, got three artists in the city to take part in this little piece about being an artist in the city. It was seven minutes long. And all I needed was a bit of press just so I can send to Cypher and be like, yeah, this is what I do, fam. Like, this is light work, you know? Um, so shot the piece, um, Complex UK done a little write up about it I sent it to Cypher Sounds and I was like hey bro like yeah that's what I do um, I'd love to really tell your story at least like just get to know you a bit better on camera and he said yeah bro like let's make it happen um, and that's that's kind of how I got into documentary so Cypher Sounds is the reason how mm. I started shooting documentaries yeah. Yeah. and is this something that you you studied in school or um, yeah kind of yeah I was sitting, do you guys call it secondary school or do you guys call it high school? 
High school. Okay, cool. In, in high school, I was studying media studies, amongst other things. Okay. But when I was studying media studies, I was like, yo, this is dope. Like, I, I'm really looking forward to creating stuff. And then I moved on to college. College is same as high school, which sounds weird, but it's like the same, the age bracket yeah. is still the same. So I was in college, I was like 16, 17. And I started doing media studies. That's when I actually picked up a camera and got to use it and stuff. And other than that, man, like that, that was it. I, I didn't want to go to university because I knew YouTube existed. You can learn off YouTube. You can learn from just kind of on the grind of doing it. And um, yeah, man, I kind of, whenever I went to university, I got a retail job, saved up for a camera, was shooting dead music videos. And I'm only saying they're dead now because in hindsight, when you look back on your old work, you're like, right, this is bad. <laughs> but yeah, man. And then that's how, that's how I kind yeah. of got involved. I think, I think what's also interesting about your story too is um, you're working at the Ace Hotel, right? And then the Ace Hotel commissioned you to do a couple of things for them. Oh, right? hell yeah, yeah. So, so how did that... How did that come about? Yeah. Okay, see, I, I, st- I, I didn't know how deep I should go with the story because <laughs> it's, it's like a lot of yeah. different things that cr- created the, the journey that I'm on. So it was my thing. I used to interview entrepreneurs. When, when I was 18, I wrote a book. I wrote a book on how to get a job in the economy. And that was following a, a little, it wasn't even a little, it was an event I went to, Entrepreneurs 2012, run by this really cool guy. And what he did, he brought in like Bill Clinton, Bear Grylls, all these big entrepreneurs to come and tell their stories. And there was one entrepreneur who came through and his story was he, he created this ebook and he, he sold it in like the 90s and he made a lot of money off it. And his argument was, if you can teach even if you're not an expert in the field, if you could teach someone something, you can write a book. I don't know how true that is when I say it out loud now, but I, I got what he meant. I said, you know, I'm, at the time I was like 17. I said, I'm 17. I spent a lot of time looking for a job. I'm going to write I'm gonna write a book. So I'm writing this book now. Um, I started interviewing the same entrepreneurs that inspired me. So this book came out 18 years old. I was a published author. Didn't sell crazy, mm. but it, was, it acted as like a passport because like, out of all my friends, that was like, that was a big deal, you know, like everyone's gone off to university, they're, they're popping bottles, having fun at uni, and like, right, this, this guy just stayed in London, he wrote a book for him, like, who does that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, so, around that time, I started working at the Ace Hotel, and I met the founder of the company, uh, Alex, and we was planning to do an interview, but unfortunately, he passed away before we could ever do the interview, and so the reason why I actually went to New York was because the rest of the exec Ace team said, you know what, Alex would have loved to have done the interview with you, why don't we pick up the conversation in New York with one of our other partners? That's why I went to New York. So that's why I hear when I when I was um, when I called Cypher, I was in one of the one of the investors' offices. Wow. Um, so I came back to London, and a hotel caught caught wind of um, the documentary I did. It was only like three hundred views, but um, the head of branding, my guy Ryan, he he said, "Yo, um, we saw that you done your documentary, and we know that you want to do one about your friend Cypher Sounds." would you be interested in doing a little piece for us in new york you can stay in the hotel for free and yeah you can film our piece and and uh your piece at the same time yeah i said yo that's a, that's a sick trade-off that's a that's a that's a yeah I'm, I'm down for that and so i i went out and shot the cypher sounds piece shot their piece i came back and they liked it so much they said yeah let's do some let's do the rest of our of our, of our properties so i've done one in la i've done one in palm springs done one in new york done one in london uh, I was in Chicago. That that was the that was the reason why I went to Toronto because I'm like, when I realized I was going to Chicago, I was like, oh, I might as well go, go out to Toronto as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, man. So that's that's how Ace came about. Like that's that's family. Mm-hmm. You know? And yeah. sp- speaking speaking of Ace, like, um, so you did the New York ones, Palm Springs ones, um, L.A. as yeah. well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, technically, like, did they know that you were into filmmaking? Like, because what 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 was your role at the Ace? I was a doorman. Okay. I was a doorman. I yeah. was literally open up the door, carrying a bag inside. How you doing, sir? Can I give you a hand upstairs? Nope. Wow. All right, cool. That was my job. Wow. <laughs> and it was it was following the documentary prologue because that okay. came out. Yeah. In fact, I, I imagine you're just chilling at your job and then you get an email from the vice president of your job, of, of the company. That's so the crazy. vice president emailed me and said, hey, um, Nathan, what's up? <laughs> Love the documentary. Um ryan and other guy ashton's gonna be in touch we have an idea for you and they just they really just took a risk man they were like yo we saw what you've done with that documentary it was only on 300 views but they really like took a risk and said yeah um like let's 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 do something we want to help you out you want to do your cypher sounds documentary 
it's not cheap to do this kind of stuff. Um, so why don't you stay in the hotel for free, shoot our piece um, and shoot your piece. And then when they saw the actual finished video, they were like, yo, we should do this across all of our properties. Yeah. And so that, that was really like, you kind of agree to do something that you're not sure you can do, but you know you can do at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, man, that, that was like my first commission. They were like the first risk takers that yeah. took a real risk with me. And that's how my skill, because them pieces never really came out like that. They're, they're private pieces. So it's, I still say it's some of my best work, but that's where I really learned how to shoot. Yeah. So it just prepared me for yeah. um, doing the Cypher Sounds documentary yeah. did and stuff. You, did you make a lot of money off of the Azel Tell stuff? And was the Cypher, did you get any like money with that? Or? Nah, man, nah. Um, what's funny is I'm actually creating a course on how to, how to shoot documentaries. And I'm actually writing about this stuff right now. Um, nah, man. Like with with, um, with the documentary filmmaking, it was all just my in, my own passion to do it. There wasn't any real money involved, and even now, I, I don't really think about the money because I know like when when you do these pieces, you're kind of like hot, so a lot of work kind of comes in. Mm -hmm. Like ever since ever since I left Ace and my my documentary LDN's come out, I don't have to ask people to like for jobs. Like jobs come in regardless. Mm. This month was a mad one just because it's, it's January and everyone's broke. But then like just this week, I've had like a bunch of jobs coming. I was like, oh, right, cool. Wow. I've, al I've always made more money than um, what I was actually working at. Yes, yeah. from just yeah. simply doing something that I have passion with. Yeah. And, the, and the meetings are different now too. Yeah. People are actually talking big budget. So in regards to your question about um, Ace, Ace, Ace paid. The, the New York one wasn't, but then the other ones were. Mm -hmm. uh, day rate, travel, yeah. all that stuff. Um, the Cypher Sounds piece, no, it wasn't paid, but that's what kind of got my name out in the world yeah and that's what allowed me to do all the stuff that yeah. i do now because I, I bring that up like you said because i think like when it comes to anybody who's trying to break into filmmaking or i guess documentation or anything in media yeah or creative there is some type of level of investment that you have to sort of um put in yourself and i think that's what you've done with you know showing up and yeah. doing the ace stuff and yeah. um, the cypher sounds documentary like i don't think you'd be getting those jobs if you don't didn't do oh, this. Hell, if, if, if i if i didn't do if i didn't do prologue if i didn't do the cypher sounds documentary i wouldn't have got commissions like mm. I, I highly doubt it but that's what separates people anyway that's why people know my name and stuff you know yeah like, if if you're not it's that there's a there's a million filmmakers there's a million documentary filmmakers i, I do talks every now and again I like they say like how, how am i going to make it how am i going to do this how am i going to do that and it's like yo bro like here's the blueprint and i'll see you in the field like yeah and there's some like more time than not, I'm not going to see them in the field because they're not, they're not built like that, you know? Mm. But every now and again, there will be someone who is built like that. And you're, that's the thing, man. Like, once you get to a certain level, everyone kind of knows each other mm. because you're, it's, it's the same circles, you know, whether, whether it be in a different industry, all the people you name that you're, you're going to be interviewing on this trip, like I've, I've heard of just yeah. because of like, that's what, that's what being, putting yourself out there gets you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Obviously, you might be broke for a bit, but it, it's, it's a perfect trade-off, yeah. you know? Like, the, the beauty of it is no one really knows what they're doing yeah. in this you know they, we're just kind of like making up as we go yeah. along speaking of broke like what is it like you know being broke and pursuing your passion um uh, I, I got a better story i, I, I mean I'll, I'll i'll give you an example so my friend did you guys ever see the hood documentary series um with um rs roll safe roll safe no i haven't seen that. Nah? no yeah roll safe so um he, he's, he's a good friend of mine it's a guy called coyote and like we used to go to college together. He came up with this idea, this mockumentary online. He released it and it went viral. It done really well, really well. Like it was, it was as big as Man's Not Hot. Word. It, it was, it was the original Man's Not Hot. Word. <laughs> it, it was the original Man's Not Hot, literally. And when that happened, I was with him. He was eating at Nando's and I was saying like, yo, what's, what's the deal? Like, what's, like, where's the money at? He said, bro, I said, right now, I've got about £10 in my account. But he's the hottest guy on the streets. Hmm. He's out, got, he got £10 in his account. He said, you know what, bro? And I'm so happy I've got £10 in my account because it's keeping me very humble. It's it's a fun journey. And that's kind of where, where it is with me with some, sometimes when it comes to projects because like money is a byproduct of just being passionate and the right opportunities coming your way. Um, you, you, learn, you learn as you go. Sometimes you might miss out on something, but that only prepares you for when something bigger comes up, you know? Mm. Um, I left some money on the table to do the Toronto documentary, you know? Yeah. But it was, it was for me, it was worth it. It was, it was my first time I ever done a screening. It was my, it's something to add to the portfolio. 
I, I wouldn't necessarily focus on the money so much as yeah. more um the product of it yeah i don't even i don't even have to answer your question sorry what, what was your question <laughs> no i was just saying like what is it like being broke and pursuing your passion at the same time because it's like you can like you know a clothing designer could want to like um you know want to show at fashion week or something like that yeah but you don't have a lot of money but you still got to do it yeah you know, yeah in order yeah to like sort of like reach that I, level I, you I, I, be at. I think yeah I, I mean the reason the reason why i told that story is because everyone goes for it man everyone goes through when, when i was in chicago i was in chicago um uh june 2017 and i had a bunch of invoices pending but they hadn't dropped yet so i was i was broke and i'd done this interview with this this guy who runs this bar uh for a documentary i'll shoot him and he runs the bar he said oh do you want to get a drink so we started drinking 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 and then we just started talking about like the, the struggle of being a creative and we kind of laughed about it. he said bro if this investment don't come in this bar is going down this bar is going under and we kind of like laughed it off hmm. it's this the way of the creative man like i i feel more com personally i feel more comfortable talking to a creative and say like yo like, i ain't really got the money right now as opposed to someone who's got a job because the job you always kind of guaranteed that yeah but it's it's, it's part of the journey it's, it's the yeah. fun thing of it like no no one no one's going through this alone Mm. it's something that people don't want to talk about because everyone wants to be like hey I'm broke yeah, bro yeah, like yeah. you're going to tell everybody <laughs> that you're broke bro <laughs> keep that shit to yourself but um, everyone goes for it man yeah. everyone goes for yeah. it yeah. Would, yeah. You, would you say like your LDN um, documentary sort of broke you oh absolutely man yeah. L LD, I credit a lot of things to LDN yeah LDN um, yeah do you want me to tell the story of how yeah, that yeah. kind of came like, about how did that yeah how did that come about so after after the Cypher Sounds documentary came out I got a bit more press uh, via like BET Double XL a few other places the source and then with the all the ace documentaries that i've done i've come back to london and i had like a bunch of money that was just pending so i was working at the hotel i went to go watch an artist called dave perform i was watching him perform me and my boy tipsy in the party he was like yo what's the next what's the next move what's the next doc documentary and i was watching him perform and i said fam i'm just gonna do one on on london i'm just gonna do one on london so straight after that got on the phone, spoke to a couple of friends of mine who was making moves in the scene. They got involved in it and it kind of just grew. And then when that came out, that was that was a that was major. If if you saw what was going on when LDN came out, that was it was like a movie dropped. Like if you if you wrote my name and click it was like it, there'd be a section that said in the news. <laughs> like it was it was big. It was a big launch. And that was just solely like social media, but it, it got press from everywhere. Press from everywhere everyone in the scene championed it and for them it was like who is this guy but everyone who knew me or met me on the path they're like yo that's our guy like that's yeah. nathan like yo you know what i'm saying um and then that just and then ever since then it's always solidified just work yeah you know what i mean and that's another good point as well like when when you do something well enough you, you won't have to worry about the money because the money will come to you mm. like ldn like that was just like a a risk because I, I quit my job to do it and i pulled it off and then as, as i said there's like just just this week I woke up three emails and that's just three that's three times the money like oh hey Nathan what's your day hey Nathan what's your day hey. and it's always been like that ever since mm. that's dropped you know wow. I, don't worry it's not like every day not yeah. every day someone's <laughs> giving me money but yeah man that's that's the that's definitely the documentary that pushed me into the do you think if you because I think what's interesting about that documentary is that obviously it gave us from like Toronto or anywhere else in the world a sort of like interesting view into what london's like music culture is like or rap yeah, culture is like yeah, yeah. but and obviously there's been such a research there's been you know a huge interest into what's happening over here and mm -hmm. in cities like toronto and atlanta yeah. but if you you say like if you did that documentary let's say um you know let's say around 20 2008 or like 10 years ago like yeah do you think you sort of have that resonance that it had no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. It it was it was, that was the right time to drop that documentary. Mm. That's why it done so well because because at the time everyone had dropped a documentary about Grime and you know everyone was talking about Skepta, everyone was talking about Stormzy, but no one was talking about Jay Huss at the time. No one was talking about Fredo at the time. No one was talking about the rap scene at the time. My documentary was I deliberately did not talk much about Grime, Grime because yeah. I felt like every, that's what everyone else was doing and that's what people who weren't from the city was doing. So I said, you know, what? let me go get the people who who are it's almost like when i mentioned the, the the toronto piece and everyone was like oh bro like you got to do drake you got to do drake yeah. and i said you know i'm trying my hardest not to even mention drake yeah because it's like you know what i mean yeah like, yeah how's that how's the toronto like documentary experience like 
Ha, that was an interesting experience, boy. Interesting. Um, it was it was fun, man. It was fun. It 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 kind of felt like I was stepping back because with the power of LDN, like everybody knew that documentary, mm-hmm. but not many people in Toronto knew it. Surprisingly, a couple of people did. I'd be out and a couple of people would find out that I did, I did it and people would come up to me, which was weird for me to have someone be like, yeah, I saw your documentary. Yeah. Like I felt like an artist, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that, that only happens to music artists, but so that was cool. But um, yeah, I, it was almost like kind of reverting to the beginning because luckily um, people did help me um, connect the dots and get the right people in the documentary but at the same time i don't i didn't have a, i don't really have like a rep like that in yeah. toronto well yeah. definitely before north side yeah. um and so it kind of was just like hey i was in chicago and i said you know what? let me just go to the city i knew the prime lot i said let me just see what i can do i didn't know smoke was going to be in it that just kind of like randomly happened through how i met danny and then Danny was one of the guys who had seen LDN, so that made it a bit easier. I guess, I guess LDN helped helped a yeah. lot of things, but yeah. Um, yeah, it kind of just it was it was a totally different experience. Did man. it feel weird going into Toronto as somebody from London to document the scene um, that's happening? Nah, because because I, I pay homage to everyone. I, I tried to get um, what's my guy's name? Um, who's the guy from Prime used to shoot Tristan? I, I tried to get Tristan involved. Um, I was reaching out to all the rap. Like I didn't just come and just like not involve anyone. It's kind of like Six Buzz. Like mm. I was speaking to Six Buzz about it, and I, I still keep in contact with a lot of people because that's that's what genuine people do. You know, yeah. like you don't just. Well, I mean, you, you can you can pull up and just do it as an assignment and keep it moving. But like, mm. I, I was fr- I was friends with with these people. I I drank with these people. Most people most of the people before I started shooting, I'd already drank with them at apartment. So <laughs> when they were like, oh yo, that's the guy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. and on top of that, we're, we're all like the same age. Um, we all come from the same backgrounds. We all sound the same in terms of our slang. So it wasn't really a thing, you know. It was kind of like, yeah. just come out and it's like, yo, yeah. yeah, I'm doing this thing. I, yeah. I didn't feel no, no way about it. Mm-hmm. But I, I definitely did try and get people involved to kind of like encapsulate more for me and help me yeah. out, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I felt like I made the right choices with the people I got. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got I got. Cause well, I, I guess you could tell me. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I don't know. What's funny <laughs> is that that kind of happened, done the screening and then I came back to London and then the views went up a bit and then that was it. So I I don't know. How how do you think it went? I mean, um, it's interesting because I don't think we've ever had anybody document the scene Mm -hmm. like that, at least from what I can remember. Yeah. Um, Eric, you can correct me, but, um, so it was interesting to sort of see you come from London and do that. And I was, and I think I made a point on Twitter or somebody made a point on Twitter, like, yo, somebody from somewhere else came to document our scene. Like, we need to stop waiting. You know what I'm saying? It, I think you sort of like put fire under our butts and like, you know, oh, like we yeah. need to start like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's and that's the thing. Is that, yeah. And it's very easy to criticize people mm-hmm. if you ain't done shit yourself. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I did see like a big, not, not so much with me, you know, I, I, I haven't seen anything negative about my piece. And the, one, and the few people that were trying to say something was like, oh, why don't you get this person? Why? And that was just a pers- that was a personal yeah, preference type yeah, thing. Yeah. But when the when the six rising piece came out, like I saw a bunch of people tweeting like, "Hey, like, you know, we need to start telling our stories." We need to start- and it's like, "Yo, like, do you need to keep telling the timeline, or yeah. you're gonna do it?" Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what separates people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's interesting. The six rising thing came out because I seen the six rising documentary. I seen that, and mm-hmm. I remember seeing like your documentary earlier in the summer or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, Nathan's documentary is comp- like." This it's very different. smashes like <laughs> Six Smash Rising that. because it's done from um, a perspective. Um, you're actually passionate about like mm. you know Toronto culture, and you're actually you know a person of color who actually understands what it is. You know, mm. but I feel like Six Rising. I seen the director, and he's like. <laughs> it's so interesting to me and i don't care <laughs> who's gonna listen to this because i'm about to go off but like <laughs> i remember he was saying oh um you know i moved to toronto and you know i was kind of bored and i was like you know let's work on something but like that's sort of like where the projects i was really you were bored and you really wanted to work on a project so you're like yeah and then i seen the story and i was like oh yeah then and then i remember sticks mr sticks on um what's his name um yeah six on twitter he was like yo we need to start telling our own stories so because when i seen the six rising i was like yeah it's complete trash yeah i mean 
when it comes to like again man people people say all day long and obviously i don't know if that guy's a filmmaker or whatever but whoever that filmmaker is from like wherever in 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 toronto like i'm hoping that they're they're saving up their money to get their camera as opposed to just talking about you know like i'm taking like right now this is like this is like the land is ready for a real documentary something that i well i I could pull off but i didn't have enough time i was in the city for like three weeks filming um, so there was only limited thing I could do. But yeah. if someone was to do what I did with LDN, they they'd have their moment as well, you know, yeah, like on, on a real big yeah. scale. Like there there was documentaries that existed before LDN, mm-hmm. but I saw them and I said, "I right, this is what how I don't want to do it. I'm going to do it like this." Yeah. So I hope that the two pieces have at least inspired someone, a creative in the city, to go forth because whoever does it first will go. Yeah. You know, if they dedicate like six months to doing it. They will go if, if they can like pull it off um, well enough. Maybe um, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think the closest thing yeah. was um, that dude. Uh, what's his name again? M Works. I think M Works. M Works had a documentary. If if he maybe refined that, I think M Works probably has. He could probably pull it off. I mean, anyone could pull it. Trist, whoever yeah, wants to, yeah. whoever wants to pick up the project. But it's it's a it's not as simple as like you think. Just to kind exactly. of like pick up a camera and do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like yeah levels to like creating the documentary because you were writing producing and editing i did everything everything, yeah 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and you learn all that through youtube curious um so if somebody wants to sort of you know get into like documentary filmmaking and they and i think like when i have conversation with the friends who are creatives and like ah man i don't know how to start this blah blah blah. so i remember like when we started a new currency i was like well i the idea is to like interview people in different cities around the world. So basically all I need to do first step is book a flight. Second step mm-hmm. is like, would anybody be down? Let me just email a bunch of people and see if they're down, you know, yep, like second yep, step. Yep, yep, so yep. it's like, how do you break it down? If somebody wants to get into documentary filmmaking, right? Mm-hmm. They have no skills. And they don't know, they don't know where to start. Like what's the first step. Okay. This is good promo time because I'm actually creating a course on how to create a documentary. Yeah. And this just isn't any course. <laughs> I've actually like, <laughs> What's really cool is I went I went through the this hasn't even been announced but I'm yeah. it's going to be coming out very soon so I'm, I could tell you like yeah. so like I went to the US and I interviewed like all these different like big Hollywood agents about with like how to like get television deals I've interviewed the um, one a director of my favorite documentary Cocaine Cowboys down in Miami and he talks about how to have people open up in conversation um, I'm interviewing the director of the Amy Winehouse documentary which is the wow. the highest grossing documentary in the UK second highest gross in I'm going to butcher the statistics, but it's a big documentary. I saw that doc. Yeah, it, it was crazy. It, it won an Oscar. Um, so, yeah, there, there'll be links in the description. But um, in, 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 in a nutshell, how to create documentaries, <coughs> if you don't know, um, well, sorry, what was the question? How, how do you create a documentary? Yeah, like how do you, so anybody What would be the first to, steps of creating? Yeah, first steps of like getting into filmmaking or documentary. All right, assuming that you've got a camera and some drive, and yeah you would you'd send out your first set of emails or you'd you'd reach out to the people closest to you who you might would want to have in a documentary when you reach out to other people you don't have overlapping like um clicks i guess like if you know this person doesn't like that person don't even bother mentioning them in the email um you would kind of work your way into getting into like getting to know certain circles and um basically kind of get getting your name out there so like you might be able to get like a a smoker and jimmy prime and then through that you use that as like a a passport to get you puffy else and then through puffy then you might be able to get safe and then mm. and then, all right cool so now you've got that click then around that time i'll probably release a trailer and try to get some press yeah and then with that press i then use the press to then get some more people and then i'll get some more press from that and then by the end of it you have a thing that's what i personally do wow yeah yeah how do you how do you how did you come up with that like strategy that's what i've been doing <laughs> <laughs> that's what i've been doing literally it's, it's not even a i can't like i'm sure people are going to tell you different stories but for someone who's come from i'm assuming i've come from a lot of people's background of working a job saving up some money having a camera and having some drive obviously that wasn't the plan when i first started it but that's just kind of how it happened that's how you would do really well because you want people to be talking about it. i've got the most people in the ldn documentary the minute the second trailer went out and it went semi-viral like all the all the music channels like posting it like i if like if toronto rappers and six bars was to post the the trailer a couple people see it i mean like 
Drake follows um, both of those accounts, yeah. you know, and then it will kind of grow like that. Mm. So, um, yeah, you get get who's in your vicinity, and if you don't know no one, go go to a show, get some dope shots of them, ask for their manager, send them the shots, say, hey, I'm working on a documentary. Is there any chance we could do this? And obviously, you're gonna go back and forth. It's, it's an artist, like that's yeah. how it is, and then. You kind of build on that. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't even a generic. Uh, that's that's actually how I do documentaries. Yeah. That's how I've done documentaries up until now. Um, I, I reach out to who's in my vicinity, who I can get. Um, and then I kind of build off that. Yeah. And ask for favors, man. Ask for favors. If you know this person can connect you, ask if they can. Yeah. But um, one thing I must say is that it's a lot easier to get people involved when you don't have to explain who you are. Uh. That's, that's the bottom line. Like, that's why like, I'm doing another documentary up north and... Up, up north in up in Birmingham, up in um thing they, like they a lot of them seen the LDN documentary. Said so there's artists who actually want to be in it now, hmm. as opposed to me having to ask them. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does does it say, does it take a certain personality to, I guess, um, do stuff like documentaries and mm. stuff because like you mentioned, you know, you have to just go to shows and like push yourself out there. Maybe not a lot of people are comfortable with that, but uh, they still want to tell stories. Yeah, I mean. You, you are technically behind the camera so I mean yeah. you're not you're not in the spotlight kind of guy but um, if if that's the case then have have your work speak f speak for you like if if you don't and bottom line if you have nothing to show go out and get some shit go to go to a show go shoot a show you don't it doesn't matter who this person is go shoot a show go get some shots of your city get some concepts and stuff going create a little show reel because that was a big part for me when, when LDM was getting worked on I created like this trailer and it only had like a bunch of shots around the city, but it was re it was shot really, really well. It was really cinematic. So when I sent it to these people, they were like, we'd never speak. They hadn't seen anything like it. So like, yo, someone's actually doing a documentary. It's like a film. I'm in. Right. You know, so if your work could do the talking, then then yeah, easy. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know how Remark is in per I'm, I've, I've met him a couple of times, but he seems quiet. But his work does the talking. Like, you know, if, like when you think dope photographers in the city, you think of him. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So, I mean, yeah. like, I've, I've, I've grown into this, this character of being able to talk and stuff because I've, I've done a bunch of shit. Yeah, but, yeah. But before then, like, you have to let your work do the talking. And if not, like, like if you used to go from my gram, like, a couple of years ago, there was pictures like DJ Khaled and Rick Cross. So, like, I'm telling you, like, impressions is everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bottom line, bottom line, like, people, if, if you send an email... And you cover your socials and they check your socials and like, you're not doing anything cool. You're just taking pictures of your food and shit. It's like, who's this guy from? Like, why, why we work with this guy? You know what I mean? You know I'm saying like, and, and that's that's the truth. Like, if someone messages me, the first thing I'm going to check is their social media and stuff. Like, shall I? Okay, sh okay. Sh he's got, even if even if you don't have many followers, but like, if you your work's there and it's if clean. If you curate, yeah, if you curate your if social. If you curate your shit. Because yeah. I think, I think like so social media is a new LinkedIn. Oh, absolutely, like, man. Who uses business cards link, link, anyway? LinkedIn, <laughs> like my, my LinkedIn is a joke, fam. Like, I think I think my what I think I work at like the Krusty Krab on like my LinkedIn. Like <laughs> it's like a, a joke. I've, I've wrote on LinkedIn before. Like if you use this, this is a joke <laughs> because it's 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 for like it's a, it's a different industry though. Like I have friends who are bankers and that and that is like their Instagram their bread and butter. Yeah, but in the creative industry, your Instagram and your Twitter is your your LinkedIn. Yeah, so. Are you Create that persona that you want to... <laughs> I mean, it's your life. Do yeah. what you want in it, but... <laughs> yeah. Are, are, are you... Would you say you're successful? Would I say I'm successful? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think... I think success... As someone who, who grows with success, like, the previous accomplishment will always dwarf... I mean, your next your next goal will always dwarf what you've done previously. Mm. So even though Northside didn't do as, I only say well because I think Northside did do pretty good, um, but it didn't do as many numbers as LDN. That was a huge stepping stone because that was like my first screen, and that was like, you know, what I'm saying we're always moving forward. Um, so when I look back, yeah, like w me being 18 years old first starting out, if I met me, I'd be like, yo, shit, you're you're doing your thing. But at the same time, I know I know people like Asif who done the, the Amy Winehouse documentary. He's got he's got an Oscar, and he's like I I know I said like people hit me up and da 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 da. But he can he can go into anywhere and get funding just like that. He can be like right, I'm working on this film. How much do you need? Right, cool, sold. You know I've got a friend, um, my guy Mandan, 
Shout out Mandon, love it. He he's one of the guys who got me into documentary filmmaking. He does all the documentaries for World Star, and I went. He's actually in my documentary course as well. A hey, promo. <laughs> um, so so Mandon, he was um, he done this series called The Field, which was in Chicago. Then he went to Miami. Then he done the, the Enigma series with um, Kodak Black and um, Young Dolph. And then now he's he's recently been commissioned by Stars, and I hope I hope it don't. Um, it's part it's part of your journey. He he won't mind me telling you this, but like. Um, the field it cost seven thousand five hundred dollars. That's what Q from Wellstar gave him to go down to Chicago and do that. Hmm. He's doing he's doing a series for stars. The first episode in Philadelphia, and they've given him seven hundred and fifty thousand. Wow! To to do it, and that's but you don't get like I'm. That's the beauty of it. Like those people that they don't look down at me. It's just a matter of like I'm. I might be like a year behind. Mm. I might be like two years behind. I might not even be that far behind because I'm having meetings now. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so yeah, successful. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all right. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting by. Yeah. Or oh, what yeah. does success? Is success money or is success? Um, oh, it's, success is happiness. Okay. Um, I was, I was trying to relay it to the to the thing though, because I mean, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. He was like, yeah. oh, success. I know you're, you're saying like, do you think you're successful? Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to hear the political yeah. answer, bro. Like, do you think you're successful? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Success, success is happiness, man, and that's why. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, don't don't even worry about the money, man. Don't even worry about the money. Me and my boy Kane. I don't know if you guys met Kane. You met Kane. Um, one of the times we was in New York City, and um, we was filming the Cypher Sounds documentary. Actually, the Cypher Sounds documentary we was out there in the city. We both didn't get paid for my job. I had like twenty pounds, which worked out to be like thirty dollars. He had like thirty pounds, which worked out to be like forty-five or fifty or whatever wow. between us. And then. We, we'd laugh about it. Like, what? It's funny because one of the first things we'd be done was buy a bottle of alcohol just in case shit gets rough. <laughs> and there was a point where we were saying, there was a point where I was saying to him that don't worry because we're in this big hotel. They've got a gym and everything. I was like, bro, don't worry because I know that you can, you can drink water. Like they've got water downstairs. <laughs> and I said like, as far as I know, you can survive for like about three weeks. If it, <laughs> obviously, it would never get like that. But that's the kind of shit that we were talking about. But it's it's fun, man. That's what being young is about. That's what being the broke creator is about. It's like those funny stories. I mean, of then then one of the the invoices dropped, so like we mm-hmm. was then we was up. But yeah, man, it's it's all part of the journey, man. The, the screening, the, the screening. I was, I was broke when I did that. I spent mm. all my money to bloody film the documentary. Mm. I came back from my, I got one job. My boy said, "Yo, let's go." I said, "Cool." I want to book my ticket. He wound up bailing on me. And um, yeah, man. Then, then, then we made it happen. That's the thing, man. It's like it's all part of the journey, you know. Word. Yeah, man. Word. The journey continues. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Thanks you so much, bro. No worries, man. Yeah, this is dope. Cool.